Over the last two years, the United Sorghum Checkoff has put a lot of resources into sugarcane aphid management. We've funded numerous studies across the U.S. Uh, looking at sugarcane aphid. Uh, various, various research topics have been covered. And then we've also put together a lot of information just from an educational standpoint. This is going to be a series of seven, seven videos where we're highlighting different topics for sugarcane aphid management. In this video series is sugarcane aphid biology. And we've learned a lot about sugarcane aphid uh, biology the last, last uh, two to three years. We still have a lot to learn about it, and it, it has been a challenge. And I think the more we learn about the biology, the better we'll be able to uh, adapt our management strategies accordingly. One of the common questions that, that, that often comes up at meetings is, where did the sugarcane aphid come from? Uh, we, we first identified the sugarcane aphid in sorghum in 2013, and then it really became an issue in 2014. Uh, one of the common thoughts originally was that the sugarcane aphid that we were finding in our sorghum must have come from sugarcane aphid that was in sugarcane. Uh, that, would, that would certainly make sense. But in fact, what we have, uh, what we have, have seen or discovered is that the aphid that is in U.S. sorghum is actually a different biotype than what you find in sugarcane in the U.S. And the biotype that we're seeing in our sorghum actually is the same, uh, the same biotype that we see in West Africa, Australia, and China. So how it actually got here, we're, we're unsure, but uh, that's, that's what it's related to is those aphids in those countries. There's also a third type actually uh, biotype that you find in East Africa, uh, the Indian Ocean area, and the Caribbean and South America. What I think is important about this is that when we've, we've, we've looked at the, the sugarcane aphid across the U.S., uh, it's the same biotype, whether that's in, in Texas or it's in Florida, it is the same biotype. And so from a, from a management standpoint, what we do to control the aphid should be somewhat similar. Well, the first step really in controlling the aphid is just properly identifying that aphid. And uh, <clears throat> there's four aphids that typically get into sorghum. There's the corn leaf aphid, which typically is not much of an issue. There's the yellow sugarcane aphid, the green bug aphid, and then now the sugarcane aphid. What really distinguishes the sugarcane aphid uh, from these others is certainly its, it's, it's body color to some extent. It's going to be a a yellow to even even a tan to whitish color sometimes, uh, and then the, the the very distinguishing characteristics on its back end, you'll see these these uh, black cornicles, or sometimes referred to as tailpipes. The aphid will also have black uh, black feet, and then black tipped antenna. Uh, you can tell it apart from the green bug pretty readily uh, because of the color differences of the green bug. The aphid that's most often confused with it is this yellow sugarcane aphid. Uh, it really helps to have a magnifying glass to tell the difference in those two. Uh, the yellow sugarcane aphid will, will not have these black cornicles uh, or the black feet for that matter. But then it also has, and it's hard to see in this particular slide, but it'll have little bristles uh, on its back where the, uh, the, uh, the sugarcane aphid does not. And uh, it'd be nice if, if we had a different name uh, for those two aphids, uh, a little more distinguishing name rather than calling them both of them the sugarcane aphid, but uh, for now that's that's what we got. So anyway, look for those black cornicles. Uh, keep a magnifying glass to, uh, with you when you're scouting, and you can you can identify the aphid uh, pretty readily. Another distinguishing characteristic with the sugarcane aphid is that it produces a honeydew material. So as it feeds, it secretes the sticky material uh, that. Uh, that, that, that definitely is sticky. I mean, you can walk through it, you'll get it on your pants, uh, get, you, know, you, you touch the leaf, get it on your hand, it's, it's, it's a sticky material. Uh, and, and sometimes this is the first sign that you'll see as you're scouting a field. As you're walking through, you'll see a random plant that'll just be, maybe have a shiny leaf and it'll be sticky. Uh, the aphids actually <clears throat> colonize on the, the underside of the leaf. So that's where you'll find the, uh, the aphid. Typically, it'll be around the midrib. Doesn't always have to be clustered around the midrib, but that's often what you, what you see. Uh, in the picture, in this particular picture, there's probably a good 500 aphids right there around that midrib. 
Another question that we get, well, how does the sugarcane aphid spread? Uh, well, the sugarcane aphid spreads really in the wind currents. And, uh, and that's how it moves from field to field and even to region to region. And it can literally move hundreds of miles this way. <clears throat> so what you want to watch for uh, in the field is you'll occasionally see these, uh, these aphids with wings on them. And, and sometimes you'll see, a, see a, a field that has a lot of these winged aphids which means that these aphids are getting ready for whatever reason to, to move and they'll get up into the air and then, and then the wind will blow them to other fields or other regions. Or in some cases it could be just the opposite. If you see some winged aphid, it could mean the aphid has just come into your field. But you will occasionally see these winged aphids and that's how they, uh, how they do move around. Now what makes sugarcane aphids such an issue in sorghum is its uh, uh, reproductive capability. <clears throat> the sugarcane aphid is born pregnant and then that aphid will begin to give birth about four to five days uh, later. And uh, once it starts producing young, it can really produce offspring in a hurry. Um, once it begins to produce those young, you can pro it will produce as many as eight to 10 aphids in a single day over about a 10 day period. Now, once you get past that 10 to, to 12 day period or so, it begins to taper off and over the lifespan of that aphid, which can last approximately 30 days, uh, you'll average about three to four aphids per day. And so uh, that is the reason that the sugarcane aphid can just build up so quickly in a field is it, it just has a, a, the tremendous ability uh, to reproduce. Another question we get is, what are the plants that sugarcane aphid will survive on? Well, for the most part, the sugarcane aphid is pretty much limited to, to the sorghum genus. So grain sorghum, forage sorghums, uh, your Johnson grass, your sorghum Sudan crosses, Sudan grasses, that's where you will see the aphids and where they're a problem. Now they may actually survive for a, for a few days on, on some other crops like uh, corn and, and pearl millet, sugarcane, and then some of your grasses, crabgrass and barnyard grass but uh, they don't cause any damage to those, to those plants. So if you have a, a field of sorghum that's heavily infested with, ap with aphids, it's not gonna be unusual uh, to see a few aphids in the, the uh, adjacent cornfield. Uh, and those aphids may su survive on that corn for maybe a couple of weeks, but they really shouldn't uh, develop as far as the population increasing and really shouldn't cause any issue. Just really isn't a problem in corn. Now, it doesn't feed really at all on some of your winter grasses like wheat, rye, and oats. Again, you might see a few show up in, on wheat simply because the wind blows aphids over into the field, but they shouldn't feed on that wheat and shouldn't persist at all in a wheat, rye, or, or oat crop. So kind of summarizing this, this just a little bit, uh, we, we've learned a lot about the biology of the sugarcane aphid over the last few years, and I think we'll continue to learn a lot about the aphid and, and that should help us with our management decisions. If you have any issue in identifying the sugarcane aphid, be sure and check with your uh, regional extension entomologist and he can help you do that. The United Sorghum Checkoff on our webpage, uh, we try to keep a lot of current information from a research standpoint uh, on our website, so I think that's also a good source of information.